Welcome to this Final Cut Pro 10 training. My name is Larry Jordan. In this session, I want to talk about creating a new event and project. The goal of this session is to show you how to add Final Cut Pro 10's icon to the dock. Then we'll start Final Cut Pro 10 and create a new events folder. I'll show you how to do this both on the boot drive and on a second drive. We'll then import some tapeless media and during this I'll explain key import preference settings. And finally, we'll create a new project in preparation for editing. To add the Final Cut Pro icon to the dock, go into your Applications folder. The keyboard shortcut is Shift-Command-A and open up the Final Cut folder. Grab the icon for Final Cut Pro and drag it over to the dock. The dock will open up and make room for it. And now you can either start the application by double-clicking it from the Applications folder or, what's a lot easier, to click on it in the dock. This is the interface for Final Cut Pro 10. It's a single window interface that consists of three sections. The viewer, which is where we see our pictures, the event library and event browser, which is where we view media, and the project library and project timeline, where we edit media. And we'll be spending a lot of time talking about all of this. For right now, though, let's get ourselves started with just importing some media and getting ready to edit. Although you can start by first creating a project, it's often easier to start by importing your media by creating an event first. Now, an event is simply a collection of media files which are stored inside your computer. And we can import events from iMovie, or we can import files, or we can import from a camera. We can import from a file which brings in a file that's stored on our hard disk that doesn't need to be converted from some other form. An example would be a, a PNG or a TIFF image or a QuickTime movie. Importing from a camera, though, implies that we need to modify the media before Final Cut can bring it in. For instance, we can import from a camera that's attached to our computer. We can import from the EyeSight camera built into our computer or we can import from a folder of files copied from a solid-state card or a, a hard disk which is plugged into our computer. Notice that by default the new event folder is stored on your boot drive. In this case it's my Macintosh HD. However, I recommend that you put all of your event folders on a second drive. To create a new event on a second drive Click the drive you want to store the event on, go up to the File menu and say New Event. Although you can rename an event at any time, my recommendation is to name an event when you first create it. That way you know what the event is all about. So we're going to call this the GNOME Project and press the Enter key to make the name stick. Once I've created this event, there are two choices that we have. We can import files or import from camera. Importing a file this one right here, means that I'm going to bring in a file which can already be read by Final Cut. This would be a QuickTime movie, a TIFF image, a PNG image, something that is already in media format on your hard drive. Import from camera, however, could be a variety of different things. It could be a camera which is attached to your computer, like a FireWire device. It could be the EyeSight camera which is built into your computer, or it could be a folder containing files that were shot to either a hard disk or a solid state disk, which you've now copied to your hard disk. My recommendation is always copy your media files from your card to your hard disk before you ingest. In which case, when we are copying media files from a folder, we click on the Import from Camera option. When I click on this, Oh, my goodness. Hello. <laughs> this is the EyeSight camera. That's the default setting when you click on From Camera, because that's the camera that is most obviously attached to your computer. Well, in this case, I don't want to copy from a camera attached to my computer, nor do I want to copy from the EyeSight camera. I want to copy from an archive, which is stored in a folder on my hard drive. To do that, I'm going to open an archive, and it says, where's the archive stored? It's stored on my second drive. I've created a folder called Media Samples. And here's a folder of AVC HD Media, which was shot for me by Joe Centeno. I just select the containing folder and click Open. Notice now in the top left corner, two archives show up, the built-in eyesight and Joe's collection.
Well, I'll spare you the pain of looking at me, and I'll switch over to AVC HD. And these are the images that Joe shot. Notice that there's lots of them. We've got 22 clips in all to choose from. Now, they are not yet imported. All we're doing is we're looking at the contents of the folder. Now we get to decide what we do want to import. Well, all I'm doing is I'm using the skimmer to drag across the surface of the image. I'm not holding the mouse button down, I'm just simply dragging the mouse back and forth. In this case, I want to select by click, hold, and dragging, I want to select this range of that shot. An interesting thing about selection, if I drag a selection here, and I hold the command key down, I can select multiple additional clips. But if I want to select a portion from multiple clips, I need to select the portion of the first clip and then click Import Selected before selecting the second range because even if you hold the Command key down, it will only allow one range to be selected across multiple clips at a time. Well, in my particular case, I just want to select the beginning of this clip, so I'm going to click, hold, and drag across there, hold the Command key down to select the flowers, hold the Command key down to select Clip 7. And we'll hold the command key down to set the tricycle here. I've now selected the clips that I want to bring in, and only those selected will be imported. When I click Import Selected, it then opens up a dialog that says, how do you want to bring these in? Do you want to add them to an existing project, or do you want to create a new event? Well, in this case, I want these images to be the video for my GNOME project, so I'm going to add them to an existing event. You could create a new event, and this would allow you to specify what drive you want these stored to. We'll talk more about that when we talk about ingesting a little later in this training. I can bring these files in as native AVC HD files, and Final Cut will edit them. But Final Cut will do a better job of editing if I optimize them. What this does is this transcodes the media from AVC HD into Apple ProRes 4.2.2. The file sizes are bigger, but the color quality and image quality is greater. Also, the performance of Final Cut is better. So if you want something simple, then don't check Create Optimized Media. But if you're looking for image quality and faster performance from your system, Optimized Media is a better choice. For some of us that are dealing with really high-end formats, we want to work with a proxy media. What this does is it creates a Apple ProRes 4.2.2 proxy file, which is a very small file which would allow us to do a rough cut and then we would do an online later to higher quality. Classic example would be working with red footage. Most of the time, for most formats, you're either not going to select either of these or select optimized media. You would only turn on stabilization and rolling shutter if you're working with HDSLR footage. You would turn on stabilization if everything is handheld, but if you've got it on a tripod and it's not HDSLR, you don't need to turn this on. Analyze for balanced color. You'll turn this on if your colors are off, everything is blue or everything is orange. If you want Final Cut to create metadata that describes the number of people in the shot and the angle of the shot, close, medium, or wide, turn this option on. However, calculating this can take a long period of time and the results are not always accurate. After working with this program for many months, my recommendations for importing are to always turn on optimization, never turn on the video import settings, and always turn on the audio import settings. Optimization significantly improves performance and potential image quality. The video analysis takes a long time and can be done later for just those clips that you need. And audio analysis is fast and easy to change if you decide to override the setting. Then click Import. Final Cut now pulls the media from the folder upon which it is stored on your hard disk and creates new media, copies it, from where it was into the Events folder which is stored on the second drive. If for some reason you wanted to stop the import, click Stop Import. You can see what you imported because of this orange line down here. The orange line indicates I imported a little bit more than a half of this clip, but all of this clip. And the circles indicate what the background process, see that itty little circle right there? Indicates what the background process is working on. Once we're done selecting clips, click Close. 
Now up here, the GNOME project is working on bringing in all this media. You can see the status right here. This is the background task window. It says it's 70% complete. If you click on it, it opens up the background task window. It's currently transcoding and analyzing these clips. It shows you what clip it's working on, what percentage it's in, etc., etc. Whenever you want to see what's going on, this is like a dashboard you can open to say, oh, look at that. It's busy doing transcoding or busy doing exporting. Very cool. There's a button down here. Actually, there's two. This allows us to determine how much of the clip we want to see. Do I want to see keyframes based every minute, keyframes every 30 seconds, keyframes every 5 seconds? I can zoom into my clips by simply grabbing the slider and dragging it back and forth. This switch allows me to adjust how high the clips are. Do I want to make them smaller or taller? As well as, do I want to see audio waveforms? Notice that the bottom 25% of each shot is reserved for seeing the waveform. In this case, the waveform is simply indicating the sounds of wind through the trees and birds chirping. While it's nice, I don't need to see it, so I can turn the waveforms off. The waveforms are not deleted. They're just not displayed. To close this window, click the switch again. And you can adjust this at any time by clicking the switch to open that window. What we've just done is we've created a new event, we've named the new event, and we've selected the media that we want to bring into that new event. And because we selected the second drive, we've stored that media on a second drive. Now we want to create a project itself. So the event is media. The project is how it gets edited. You can store projects on your boot drive or the second drive. My recommendation is to store it on the second drive. So I select the drive simply by clicking on it. Select the drive that I want to store my project information to. Now the project file consists of how I want it edited, the render files, the waveform files, the thumbnail files, all the stuff that Final Cut needs to be able to edit the project. And because it has render files, which is media, my recommendation is to store it to your second drive. To create a new project, go down to the bottom and click this plus key. The plus key allows you to give it a name. So we're going to call it the GNOME Project. Projects must link to one event. They don't have to have the same name. Uh, GNOME, so let's prove that. Among Us. Gnomes Among Us. I have to link it to one event. However, it can use media from any event. This will define what video format you're using when you edit the first clip into your, your project. It's going to automatically set the video settings based upon the clip you edit in. And I leave that generally set the way it is. But I don't like the audio default. Notice that it defaults to creating a surround mix 48K ProRes 4 to do render files. It's the surround that bothers me. Surround is six channels of audio, four of which I can't play on the web. I recommend setting it to custom and changing the audio channels to stereo. The sample rate to 48 kilohertz is exactly right. And a render format of ProRes is a really good compromise between high quality and small file size. We have four different choices for render formats. But Apple ProRes 422 is probably the best. By the way, if you need to create video for systems that don't support ProRes, use uncompressed 10-bit 422. But for high def, Apple ProRes 422 is an excellent choice. I wish we could set this as a default to be stereo, but we can't. We just have to remember to set it for each project. Once you've got these settings set, click OK. And there is our project, Gnomes Among Us. You have to say it with a dramatic echo in your voice. If you ever want to see the project list, click this icon down here. There's a list of all the projects we have on our system. If you want to go back to the timeline, click that icon and we're back to the timeline again. So what we've done is we've started Final Cut Pro 10 for the first time. We've created an event and added media to it. Remember, events store media. And we've created a new project. In summary, media is stored in the events folder. Media can be imported from a camera attached to your computer, from an eyesight camera, from a folder on a hard disk, or from a file on your hard disk. Optimizing creates a ProRes version of your media. The file sizes are a little bigger, but the performance of Final Cut and the quality of your images is improved. And best of all, everything is saved automatically. You don't have to save your project. It's done for you every time you make a change. 
My name is Larry Jordan, and thanks for watching this Final Cut Pro 10 training.